What's up guys, my name is Tech and welcome to my solo queue Ronin build guide. This build is for when you're a matchmaking and you don't know the quality of your teammates. Let's get into it. So before we get into the build, I think it's important to talk about the build's playstyle. One of Ronin's best strengths is its ability to heal and support its allies, however, I think the other thing Ronin excels at is its ability to stall and hold a point for as long as possible. This build will focus on that. So with that being said, your techniques. Your ultimate ability is Breath of Izanami and it revives all downed teammates. More on this when we get to our third perk. I prefer to take the Spirit Dog ability over the Healing Incense. I think there are too many variables for you to get consistent value out of the healing in battle. Your teammates will often be flying away from you and you can't even be sure that you're going to stay in the area due to having to dodge often. Your Spirit Dog on the other hand is Fire and Forget value. When you pop it, it's almost a second teammate and often you'll see it pulling aggro from one to multiple enemies. Enemies not targeting you means you take less damage in the long run and it means you also have a chance to deal more damage as enemies not targeting you will not be guarding your attacks. For your first perk, I like to go Weakening Burst because it helps to add to your survival by both making the enemies deal less damage to you and allowing you to kill them faster. Not to mention it has minor crowd control knocking enemies back. It's almost a triple threat. The second perk I like to take is Resolve Increase. This perk synergizes well with Weakening Burst as it costs one Resolve to do the burst and it's not a good idea to use your burst only to have a teammate go down a few moments later and then you can't revive them. Also if you use your ultimate it'll be a third faster to get it back available. Lastly I like to take Soothing Breath. While I don't doubt that Fire Breath is useful, I think you will not always know when you're going to get the full value. For example, if you use it for damage, you won't always know that your teammates are around enemies, and in that case, you may have wasted your resolve. Also, in my experience, shortly after I use my ult for damage, my teammates sometimes die and then I have no resolve to revive them. Soothing Breath does not have either of these problems because you can see your teammates' health bars and down status, so you will always know when you're going to get value. Plus, whether you used it to revive them or for a heal, it's less likely for your teammates to go down after using it, giving you time to build the resolve back or time to use weakening burst. Think of soothing breath as a way to hold your teammates hand while not being next to them. Also, having a heal with iframes is super useful for your own survivability. Now on to your gear, starting with your katana. For your katana, you don't need anything super specific. I would recommend a water katana, as water stance is probably the best stance due to the heavy attack combo. If you can, try getting melee damage, resolve gain, or perfect parry window. The bomb packs AoE damage and crowd control are great for this or any Ronin build. Any of the perks are good for this. Your charm slot is mostly preference, but resolve increase works well with the build for more weakening burst and more ults. For your first ghost weapon, my preferred option is sticky bomb with blast radius, because not only does it do big damage, but it will also knock back any enemies hit by the explosion. If you don't have a good sticky bomb, or you don't like it, Dirt Throw is also a good choice for crowd control and it indirectly helps for damage because enemies hit by it won't block. For my second ghost weapon, I always go Healing Gourd for more survivability. When I play this build, I like to be my team's first responder. When the round starts, I immediately run to the first point and try to meet the enemy before they get there, and I try to disrupt them with my bombs and get a few kills before the next spawn point is decided. When that happens, I try to assess the amount of people currently at the point, and if no one's already headed to the next spawn, then I go there first. The best time to spawn your dog is when you're rotating to hold a point alone, as the dog will take aggro off of you and let you hold that point longer. If you're getting there late and the enemy's already taking it, throw some bombs in the group to try and knock them around, then pick off any ones that get low. Try to stay on the point as long as possible while playing defensively. If you're getting overwhelmed and you can afford to go off point, then it's a good idea to roll out and throw bombs in the group to stagger them while you go back in and get more kills. If you have time, try to kill archers first because it's hard to turtle on the point if you're trying to parry and dodge attacks and you get hit by a fire arrow you weren't focused on. If you or your teammates are on low health or they go down, pop your ultimate and you'll have 8 seconds of staying power that will allow you to hold the point or keep them alive. In summary, your job here is to survive as long as possible while using your ultimate to keep them alive, without having to worry about what they're doing. With this build, as long as your teammates are close to competent, you can clear silver without much difficulty. See, even in this gameplay, we were playing with an AFK and we still end up getting through all the waves. And that's it for this guide. If you like this video, please drop a like and subscribe. Also, I stream all kinds of games on Twitch. Drop me a follow. Link in the description. Have a good day.